Hello and welcome back to part 4 of Monty's Ironsides and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint your bolt action British infantry. Now if you watched my uh, previous video you may remember I took a look at some of the uniforms in the video before that I showed you how you can assemble your bolt action infantry as well and I'm going to be showing you how you can paint it using the Army Painters range of paints to do so. So let's kick things off by taking a look at the paints I'll be using in this video. So here we have the British Infantryman that I'll be painting as part of this tutorial and I've primed him and already glued him down to the base and I've primed him with the Army Painters Leather Brown Spray Primer. It just gives us a really good base for the most of the um, uniform being brown. Now the first step is to highlight over the, uh, the actual main parts of the uniform which include the trousers and also the jackets as well. We'll be highlighting all of these areas with Monster Brown. So for this step I'm using my character brush and I'm going to be focusing on the upper edges of the uniform and also any of the creases in the folds such as here in the elbow. Just picking those out, leaving the leather brown visible in the recesses. Now the next step in painting this miniature is to apply a little bit of shading to the uniform, make it darken up a little bit and also get some depth into the recesses. And for this we'll be using a wash of soft tone ink. So this time around I'm using my regiment brush to apply the wash as you can see here. Being quite liberal with the application, making sure that it gets into all of the recesses, like so. So now that the main part of the uniform is completed, we can now move on to painting some of the webbing. So this includes the uh, the pouches, the straps, um, also the backpack as well, and also the gaiters around the uh, the ankles as well. And painting all of these areas with army green. For this step, I'm using my character brush. As some of these straps are quite small, so I'm just going to be painting some of the straps on here, being very careful not to overspill onto the brown areas. Now I would recommend mixing in a very small amount of water into this mix as it makes it a lot easier to apply two thin coats as opposed to one thick coat. With the base coat applied to the webbing, the next stage is to highlight all of the webbing areas with necrotic flesh. The pale green of the necrotic flesh makes a perfect highlight for the olive drab of army green. I'm just going to be focusing this along the edges of the webbing, such as in the backpack here, using my uh, character brush so I've got a nice fine point. You could use a detail brush as well if you wanted to for some of the smaller areas such as uh, the straps and buckles on the back pack there. Once the webbing has been highlighted, the next step if you have it on the miniature is to paint any of the areas such as the, the top that's inside the wrap sack here and also some of the scrim on the helmet as well. You're painting these areas with angel green. Now as some of these areas are quite uh, tricky to get to, quite small, we're going to be using the character or detail brush, whatever you're more comfortable using, just to pick out these areas, just going to be entirely painting over them. And then I'm going to be doing the same on a scrim that's on the helmet as well. Now with all of the base layers and the highlights done for the green areas, the next step is to wash over them with green tone ink. Now when washing over these areas, I would recommend using a larger brush for these uh, for the, the pouches and things like that, but for the webbing I would uh, advise using a character or detail brush as you don't want to overspill the green wash onto the brown areas. I'm going to be washing over both the, uh, the webbing and also the darker green areas that we painted in the last step as well. With the green areas painted, the next task is to paint the boots and also some of the uh, the fixtures on just on the end of uh, the entrenching tool handle there as well. And painting these areas with a matte black. Now the great thing about matte black is that it uh, goes on really nice as you can see here. I haven't even actually included any water into the mix and it's covering the over the brown really easily. I'm going to be very careful not to overspill onto the green that we painted on the previous step. With the black areas completed, the next step is to highlight them, and for this we'll be using Uniform Grey. Now I did forget to mention in the last step that you should also paint the uh, the scabbard for the bayonet as well, it's just on this pouch here, you should paint that black as well. So for this step we'll be just highlighting all the black areas with Uniform Grey. Now when highlighting, I would recommend a character or detail brush, which is uh, one of the brushes I've mainly been using in this part of the tutorial. I'm just going to be highlighting the front of the boot here, as you can see there, just a small circle on the toe and just on the same thing on the other boot as well. The next areas we'll be focusing on are some more of the equipment, so this includes the, the handle for the entrenching tool on the back there and also um, the water bottle canteen there as well. I'm painting these areas with oak brown. Now the oak brown should cover really nicely over the leather brown base that we've uh, already primed with. You can just about see here, I'm just being very careful not to overspill onto the straps there. Just filling in these gaps on the water bottle. For the next step, I'll now be washing over the darker brown areas that I painted in the previous step with Strong Tone ink. So by applying this quick wash over the areas, we'll be improving the shading as the, the wash will pull into the recesses and create the illusion of shadows. 
The next step in painting this British infantryman is to paint the wooden areas on his Lee Enfield rifle and for this I'll be using fur brown to paint the wooden stock. Now when painting the fur brown over I would recommend applying two watered down coats, just apply a small amount of water into the mix as this will give you a much cleaner finish. You can just about see what I'm doing here, just being careful to avoid, it doesn't really matter at this stage if you overspill onto the hands but just try and avoid overspilling onto the uniform. With the base layer applied, you can see we've got this kind of like reddish uh, brown wood effect on the weapon there. We're going to be applying some shading so we can pick out some of the detailing in there. And for this we'll be using soft tone ink. So when washing over the rifle you can afford to be quite liberal as we want the, the wash to pull into all of the recesses. As you can see it's doing here around the hand especially. Just being very careful not to overspill into any areas we've painted in a previous step. Now one of the final areas that we'll be painting is the flesh areas and for this we'll be base coating them with tanned flesh. Now in a similar fashion to how we painted the fur brown I would recommend mixing in a small amount of water into the tanned flesh before you apply it to the skin and then applying two coats once the first coat is dry and this will give you the best coverage possible. With the base coat applied to the skin the next step is to apply a highlight of a barbarian flesh over the raised skin areas. For this step I'm using my detail brush, I'm just going to be uh, painting the barbarian flesh onto the raised sections such as the, the nose on the face here and also the cheeks, leaving the tanned flesh visible in the recesses, I'm just going to go over very carefully, not trying to obscure the details too much here. Now the final step for painting the flesh areas is to wash over them with flesh wash. For this step I'm using my character brush as it will give me some uh, good control over the, the wash and where it goes. I'm going to make sure that I get this wash into all of the recesses in the face, you just want to see there. So this will act as both a blender between the two layers, both the, uh, the barbarian flesh and the tan flesh, and also improve the shading in the recesses you can see it's doing here. With the skin completed, the next step is to paint the metallic areas, such as the, uh, the uh, areas on the weapon here, including the bayonet and some of the actual uh, bolt action workings, and also some of the, uh, the buckles on the backpack as well. I'm painting all of these areas with gun metal. Now, as some of the areas that we'll be painting in this step are quite small, such as the, the band around the Lee Enfield there, as well as some of the bolt action workings, I'm going to be using my detail brushes for this step, as it uh, gives me a nice fine point in which to work with. So I'm just going to be painting here, being very careful not to overspill onto the woodwork. Now the final step in painting this British Tommy is to wash over the metal areas because they're a little bit too shiny at the moment and first we'll be using dark toning. Now the purpose of this wash as I've already mentioned is to darken up the metallic colours, we don't want it to be too bright. So we're going to be quite applying this quite liberally so that it darkens the colour and also improves uh, the shading in the recesses as well. And here we have the completed miniature. Now whilst this tutorial focused mainly on the infantrymen, you could apply this technique to any of the late war British. If you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page where you can donate from as little as a dollar a month and I'll pop a link in the description below there. Now until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.